Hey guys, welcome to part four of this series where we're going to download and install and configure the software for the AI case sorter. So the first thing we need to do is download the software. And you can go to www.reloadingrecipes.com. On the home page, you'll see a page that looks like this. And the middle tab here is what you'll click on. Now this requires that you authenticate, which means you need to register for an account. So to register for an account, click sign up now. You need to put um, a legitimate email address as it is verified. So after sending verification code, you should get an email with that code. I'm just gonna refresh my email here and get that latest code. So go ahead and copy the code in. Once you've copied that code, you can put it in here and verify, and then give a password and your name. That's the only information I'm collecting from you at this point. So um, I'm not going to be using your emails for marketing or for any other reason. It's just to protect the software itself. I'm giving it away for free currently. I don't know what my plan is. I don't have one yet, um, but I do expect it to be focusing more on the software side of things than the hardware. But jumping right in, you'll see as you scroll down, um, the versions, I'm gonna put the, the latest version always will be at the top. So in this case, it's here. I've already downloaded it, but you would click that to download. So once you've completed the download, you should see that in your downloads folder. You can simply double click on the sorter. Now in this case, um, you might get a, something like this, a message. Uh, generally stuff downloaded like this is not trusted. Even though this is signed, you'll have to unblock it. And you can see the digital signatures here. So going through the installation, it's pretty straightforward and you can select all the defaults. And now the sorting uh, software has been installed. We need to launch the software. So to launch the software, we'll look for AI. You can actually see it here in the recommended list, but the very first time you launch the software, it's going to ask you to sign in. So you'll sign in with the account you created. And once the sign in is complete, the software will load up. So it loads directly into the configuration tab. So the first thing I want to do is check and see um, that my camera is configured. So I already have the case sorter hooked up to this system. So you can see the VGA USB camera is actually the camera for this. And it looks like I actually have a piece of brass in the system already. So we'll go ahead and stop that. The model by default, you're gonna get a nine millimeter um, default model set up for you. It doesn't have any training, it, so that's what we're going to go through is the training process for the software. There's uh, some other steps here, some other configuration for serial port and some of the settings you can tweak as far as the slots and speeds and all of that. But for now, I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, the one thing that you'll want to do is enable image processing, and I recommend uh, to set it to eight rotations. So let's go into training and we'll go ahead and hit the uh, feed button here. So you can see one fed in, it looks pretty decent. It is CBC. I don't have CBC in my list. I only have blank and unknown. So I will go ahead and add CBC by typing it and I'll hit save and then I'll add the image. The other thing that we need to do is check the use rotations here. 
Okay, so now I have, it looks like Aguila, and that's not in my list because this is a brand new setup. So we'll go ahead and add that. Save adds it to your head stamp list, but you still need to add the images. So it's going to add the image detected plus all the versions that were rotated. You can see that each one of these is slightly rotated. So we'll hit add image. So blank, I forgot to turn the feeder on. So um, we do need to program blank. So go ahead and, and hit set it to blank and, and add those images. So once we've done that, we now have trained a couple pieces. We can save the training. Um, in the meantime, while that's saving, I will turn on my feeder here. So now I have a full, um, tube full of brass. I didn't want to leave the feeder on because it's noisy and, and hard to record with that. But we'll go ahead and train a few more. So this one is FC. We'll add that and add the image. And extreme, another new one. And what you want to call these is up to you. Um, I'm just kind of putting what's in the head stamp. I don't have Winchester yet, but I'm just going to add win. So you can see how this process works. It's fairly straightforward. If you don't have the head stamp yet in your list, uh, using that bottom field and hitting save, we'll do that. Adding image adds all these images to the training stack. Uh, this is spear, looks like. And I have spear, so I'll go ahead and add that image. And I think I have CBC. Aguila. No, that's. FC. So you can see you don't have to hit save. Save is only when you're adding a new head stamp to the list. So the other point to note is it's guessing based on the training that we've added already um, that this is Aguila, but we'd only added two. So for this instance, you know, we're just changing the training or we're changing the classification and adding that image with that classification. So we'll go ahead and add spear. You'll notice this one is a plus P and I don't have a plus P, but I will go ahead and add spear plus P and add the image. And FC, I did add that one. So I always liken this to kind of teaching a, a toddler who doesn't know how to read. You'd show them something and tell them, oh, this is Blazer. And then show them something else and they go, oh, that's Blazer. And you say, no, this is Spear. And eventually they're going to start recognizing those different things just by how they look. And so that's kind of what we're doing here with the computer at a very basic level is training the brain to, to recognize how stuff looks. Okay, so I've used up all the brass in the tube um, and rather than turn the sorter or the uh, case feeder back on, I'm going to go ahead and, and save the training and I'll turn the case feeder on while that's saving. Okay. Uh, we have another tube full of brass and we'll go ahead and feed another one. Now that our our training has been saved and the model's been re up, uh, uh, the model's been updated, we're ready to try it again. So now our model is predicted Aguila and in fact it is, so that's good. We can add that image. Okay, it picked up extreme as well. And even though it's picking these up, so you can see it automatically set this to extreme, 
it's still good to add those images. The more images you add in a set, the better your training, the better your model is going to be. I would say if you have a whole bunch of the same thing, um, adding too much of one head stamp to the model will sort of change the weighting. So it, it is also good to sort of balance the head stamps you have and not to add every, if, you, if extreme is working well, you don't need to add every single extreme. Uh, really just shoot for a balance here. So it's already getting some of them right, but we haven't put some of these head stamps in. So this is a process that takes some time. One of the things I'm planning in the future is to allow you all to share your models uh, through the software, which is also why I wanted to have the registration process. It'd be really nice if somebody trained a 223 model or um, a 10 mm or 45 model that you wouldn't have to retrain your own, you could use theirs. So I think that'd be a nice feature to have and something I'm planning on doing. So this is a pretty mixed bag of brass. I think I have, I counted 30 or 40 head stamps that are um, present in this batch. And I did do this on purpose. I wanted to get the most head stamps possible. Um, the training for this would take quite a, quite a bit of time. I would like to have somewhere in the realm of five to 10 images of each head stamp. So with 50, I mean, that's a good amount. Okay, once you're at the point where you think you have enough training and you're getting the results you like, it's time to set up for the run. So at this point, we'll click on the run and set up our slots. So I'm only gonna pick a couple, but we know we have Aguila in there, we have some Blazer, and we have some Win, and we definitely have some Extreme. So let's just do the first four slots. The slots you leave blank will not have anything sorted to them. And all you need to do at this point, once you've got your slots decided, is to hit the start button. Okay, that bell happens when you get two blanks in a row. So we've run out of brass and we've sorted everything that we had. Now this model was not trained very long, so the results I wouldn't expect to be too great. But hopefully this video gives you a good idea of how the software works and how you can configure uh, it for yourself and get it working for you. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Expect some other videos coming soon. I've made some discoveries about how to backlight the camera better. So I want to get a video put together for that. Um, also working, I have been brainstorming another idea for the sorter that has even less moving parts, uh, hopefully more reliable. We'll see how that works out. But uh, this series has been fun for me and I appreciate you guys following along. Have a great day, y'all.